Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to be walking you through physical property analysis, which is for Project Lead the Way Introduction to Engineering Design. We are in Lesson 5.6. However, I will be using Autodesk Fusion 360 to do ours, so you'll notice that my steps are a little bit different. And I do have some videos, I think, from previous years where I used Inventor. So let's talk about just a typical kind of problem. Okay, let's say that we have a client that's ordered 20 steel parts at $6.93 each. They ship with the United States Postal Service at a rate of $2.50 per pound. So how much should you bill your client then for the part, price of the parts plus the shipping and handling? And for this particular problem, we're going to be using this part, which you can see, okay? And it doesn't look like anything special, except I do want you to notice a couple of things. Number one, this is made out of steel. So steel may be pretty heavy, you know? And if we use this tool here and we go and look at the dimensions, just to point this out, that's six inches from here. To here so this is a rather large part so 20 of these things you would expect to probably weigh a fair amount okay um, just keep that in mind moving forward so the question is um, if we come back here let's talk about the math for a second what can we determine right away okay well we can figure out if you ordered 20 parts and it's 693 each we can figure out that cost of the order without the shipping Okay, so we take 20 times 693, and we know that at least for the parts alone, we have $138.60. Okay, perfect. So now, how do we move forward with the shipping and handling? Well, we would need to do a couple of things. We still need to calculate the shipping cost, and that means we have to know how much those parts weigh, right? We know 250 per pound, but we don't know how much the actual weight of 20 of those parts will be. And that's where physical property analysis will help us. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We're going to use properties in Fusion 360, which means this. We first have to create the part. Okay, so the part's already created in this example. And we have to go through and we have to change the physical material. So in Fusion 360, what that means is we are actually going to go to modify physical material. We're going to pick the material that we want, and in this case, it's going to be steel, which is a metal. And we just scroll down there in alphabetical order, so we got to go down a ways. There's steel, and we're going to just going to drag this over and lay it on top. Okay, so now we have steel, which, by the way, was the default material of the part. So um, that's actually really convenient, but that's how you add a material is you drag and drop over the top of it. Okay, so then... Whenever we have finished with that, what we can do, not just the appearance, we have to actually change the physical material because then we can right click on the body in the browser menu on the left, on the right hand side. We can right click on it and we can come down here and we can open up properties and it's going to bring up a screen that looks like this. And the information we can glean from this properties window is the following. First of all, this means surface area. Okay. We also know the density, which will change with the physical material, but not with the appearance. We can know the mass in ounces, so 381 ounces for each part. We know the volume is 84 cubic inches. We know what the physical material is, and we also know if there's an appearance override. Okay, So for us, what we're interested in in this case is what's the mass? Okay, 381.15 ounces per part. Okay, That's the total mass. So what can we do with that information then? Well, now it's time to do some math. First of all, we'd have to know the conversion is there are 16 ounces in one pound. So if we have 381 ounces and we set up our math, our fraction to be pounds over ounces, that way the ounces cancel away, we'd end up with 23.82 pounds per part. So this almost 24 pounds for a single one of these contraptions that we've created. Okay. Now, that means the total weight then, if there are 20 of them, Okay, at 23 pounds a piece, we take 23.82 times 20, that gives us about 476.45 pounds. Then we go back and we say, well, now that's going to ship at a rate of 250 per pound. So we take 476 times 250, and it turns out that, oh my gosh, it's about 1100 it's almost $1,200 just to ship these parts. At which point in time, if you are the person selling these, or if you're the client, you're sitting there going, we got to find a better way to ship these parts. The U.S. Postal Service is probably not our most efficient route to go forward, okay? But if we were going to use the USPS, and we had to client, like build a client, then what we would do is we'd take that original list, um, excuse me, that original cost of $138, we'd add in the $1,200 for shipping, and we'd find out the total price that we need to bill our client. If we're going to go that route, $1,329.73. So that's how body properties can help us solve a really complicated problem pretty easily, okay? Because if we don't do that, then let's go back to this original part. You know, if we don't go back, um, 
if, if we don't use body properties, we'd have to figure out the mass of this part some other way. That means looking up the density online. That means solving for the actual volume of this part. I mean, that would be pretty darn difficult, right? So that's how body properties helps us. Again, right click on the body over in the menu. If it's going to let me, I'm not going to let me. Oh, because I have physical materials up. Here we go. Right click properties. This is the information that you need for this lesson. So hopefully that helps. Some of the other problems are going to deal with surface area instead. Some of the problems are going to deal with mass. Some are going to deal with volume. You get to figure that out, but um, I think you'll be okay. So if you have any questions, just ask. And hopefully that helps you get going on 5.6 physical property analysis.